Hello and a very warm welcome to the Internet of Things Made Simple. I'm Larry Bohemer. This is both our 34th mini episode and the start to our series on helping companies and organizations add IoT to their business. Thanks for joining us. If you're new to the podcast, first, welcome aboard. And I'd ask you to check out our webpage, the Internet of Things Made Simple.com, which has some great material on IoT for you to look at. I always ask the same two things as well. First, if you enjoyed the podcast, why not subscribe to it using your favorite podcast service? And second, if that podcast service allows you to leave a comment or a review, kindly do so. We spent a big chunk of the summer covering smart home and consumer-related products. Now we're going to focus more on the business world for the next little bit. Businesses of all sizes and in all markets are looking at how they can improve themselves through the power of IoT. This is great, as the right IoT solution can truly revolutionize any organization, but the key phrase there is, the right solution. Over the next few episodes, we're going to cover three different fictional organizations and walk through the steps you need to take to benefit from IoT. The first organization is a mid-sized construction company. They're big enough to have multiple projects going on at the same time, but not so big as to have a large IT staff. The second organization is much smaller, as it is a chain of three local restaurants who are looking to grow. Finally, we're going to look at a small city or region, big enough to have a number of employees, but definitely not Manhattan style. In all steps, we're going to talk about how they may differ in terms of their needs and expected outcomes. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how organizations need to start with a very honest assessment. We will go over what this entails and why it is a vital first step in your IoT journey. We're going to kick things off by asking the first two questions that you need to consider. There's no particular order to these questions, but you need to consider all of them honestly. Forget what you wish you were or how you wish things ran. You need to honestly answer all of these questions to get started on the right foot. The first question is a bit of an inventory. What technology do you have today? Most organizations have some sort of network and at least some computing power. But do you have many of the things that will help push forward in IoT? IoT is all about information whenever and wherever you need it. So do you have smartphones or tablets that can be used to access that data? Do you have a secure method of your team and or yourself accessing that data? Not to worry if the answer is no, as many solutions can provide that. But you at least need to know where you're starting. If the answer to the first part is, we have nothing, it's all on paper. IoT may still be for you, but you may have to take a few more baby steps along the way. In a future question, we're going to cover how willing and able your team is to use what they have now and new technology. The second question has to do with your day-to-day business. What really are your true business pains? Again, forget where you want to go. You need to know what pains you are hoping that IoT can solve today and tomorrow. It will not make your company eligible to bid on deals that you're not capable of now. It will not prevent your landlord from overcharging you on rent, and it will not likely help you in many other ways. You need to be realistic. However, it will help solve many business pains. It can reduce costs like energy and fuel bills. It can help to speed up your cash flow and reduce clerical efforts. It can help improve the safety of your team while making them more productive, It can improve your customer service level and reduce input costs all at the same time. IoT really does have the power to change your business, but remember, it can only do so much. The third question has to do with your competition. What do they have in terms of IoT? In many cases, it may be obvious as you may be able to see them using tools like tablets for deliveries, but in other cases, it won't be as obvious. The point I'm trying to make is that you can often see what has worked and has not worked and simply copy them. If your competitor has dramatically improved operations by using smart lighting, as an example, this is something that may be easy for you to see and to follow suit. On the flip side, if you gained a bunch of customers when your competitor had issues with the system, you might want to avoid that. Finally, on this point, you may wish to talk to potential customers about what technology they demand. As an example, many may wish to have systems that they can use to see their product location live using GPS tracking. In some cases, you having the solution may be a benefit that your competitors aren't able to offer, giving you an advantage. On the flip side, you may lose deals if all your competitors offer this service and you don't. The fourth question has to do with expectations. What are you hoping to gain or change from IoT? As I mentioned earlier, 
IoT can help with a lot of things, like changing a bad culture in your organization. However, as I also mentioned before, it can help with a lot of things. We're going to go through the three fictional companies in a bit to show you how IoT can help. Be sure to stick around for that. The fifth question has to do with your organization's ability and willingness to change. IoT will no doubt change your organization. Are you prepared for that? Take a solution like vehicle tracking. You will be able to know where your vehicles are, which is going to help to reduce your fuel costs, improve the safety of your team, and improve your customer service levels. These are changes that can have a tremendous impact and offer great benefits to your company. But again, are you prepared for that? Will all of your team go along with these changes? Will many of them think you're just playing Big Brother? Do you have some non-technology savvy team members that will not be easily able to make the change? Many organizations don't do a good job in assessing this point. In the next episode, we're going to talk about choosing a solution. At that stage, it's vital that you have input from your team at all levels to not only select the right solution, but to overcome some of these concerns. The final question we're going to cover in this episode has to do with the speed of deployment and should you consider stages. Many organizations are filled with people that will have zero issue using an IoT solution. Many of the solutions are smartphone and or tablet based and most people use those devices in their personal lives. However, if you've been doing things the same way for a long time, maybe you want to slow things down on your deployment. Taking a bit of time can often be the difference between success and failure in not only IoT solution implementation, but for many things in business. In the final segment, we're going to walk through these steps using our fictional three businesses to cover some key points. Let's get started with that mid-sized construction company. A company of this size probably has some technology, at least you hope so. They probably use email. Most sites will have some kind of computing power. Maybe it's a laptop or a tablet even. And they're going to use some sort of CAD or design program, or at least have access to one to read different blueprints. This company may have a few business pains. Maybe theft at a site is an issue. Perhaps they're seeing a high fuel bill each month, and they want to reduce it, and they are slow to get orders and payments entered. As a group, the construction industry is not one of the biggest adopters of technology in general, and is very much behind in the world of IoT. So many of these companies could use IoT solutions to not only improve their business, but to leapfrog their competition. As many of these companies have not been big on technology, they're definitely going to want to take things slow. It's probable they're going to have a number of staff that are not tech savvy, and they might need to have a number of components put in to even get started. They're also going to benefit from involving team members into decisions from the earlier stage. On to the second example, the growing restaurant chain. Like construction, restaurants have not always been that tech savvy. For some, their point of sale terminal, if they even have one, some still take just cash, would be the extent of their technology. However, they are a bit more progressive than construction, as many have been using touchscreen ordering terminals and even online ordering from their suppliers. Like construction, there's a ton of available solutions. However, the benefits, at least at first, may not be as apparent in some cases. Reducing food loss and reducing power usage is great, but since most of the work happens in the restaurant itself, the benefit might not be as obvious for some owners to start. On the positive side, many restaurant workers are younger, and in general, this means they're going to have a lower resistance level and a higher uptake for the IoT solution. The other fact to consider is that the restaurant space tends to have a higher turnover level than other industries, so any solution you decide would want to be something that a new trainee could pick up quite quickly. The final fictional organization is that small city or region. Unlike the first two, there is likely an IT and our operations team in place to stick handle any new solutions. As well, most of these organizations have been using some sort of technology for a long time, and many have familiarity using portals for customers to access information. One consideration for planning and assessment for a city is often something that's an issue with construction, and that's dealing with unions. Many unions have put up roadblocks when they were not brought in early into planning sessions for IoT, so I would recommend bringing them into even the planning assessment phase. Many thanks for listening to this podcast. In the next parts of this series, we're going to offer guidance on how to select a solution that best meets your needs now and in the future. In the third part, we're going to go over how to avoid certain pitfalls during implementation. And in the final part, we're going to cover how to successfully monitor your solution, as well as to plan for future upgrades and changes. We thank you today for listening. We always love to hear from you, good, bad, and ugly. 
Our Facebook page is the first place to start the Internet of Things Made Simple, which also has some links to previous material. If I'm connected to you on LinkedIn, drop me a note through that service. And if we're personally connected, drop me an old-fashioned email or text. I don't get many of those nowadays. Thanks again for listening. I'm Larry Humor. Humor.